Opening words are by Mary Oliver, who has lots of poems about flowers. This comes from her book, Why I Wake Early, and is titled, Freshen the Flowers, she said. So I put them in the sink, for the cool porcelain was tender, and took out the tattered and cut each stem on a slant, trimmed the black and raggy leaves, and set them all, roses, delphiniums, daisies, iris, lilies, and more whose names I don't even know. I set them bright new water, gave them a bounce upward, and at the end, to let them take their own choice of position, the wheels, the spurs, the little sheds of the buds. It took to do this, perhaps, 15 minutes. Ah, uh, 15 minutes of music playing with nothing but flowers. So for our moment of centering silence, uh, pan around and look at the flowers in the sanctuary today. Uh, we also have artwork of Roger Morin in today's service uh, that you'll notice in the pews and in the back. Uh, and down front we selected some of the floral prints of Roger's. Uh, and this is also one I particularly liked, an abstract mounted painting for flower communion. So let us pause on this day of flowers. Let us take a moment and enjoy the flowers that surround us today. Breathe, breathe deeply, breathe in flowers. May we share their peace, calm, and beauty. Let us stand for our opening hymn this morning, number 29, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. And we're not doing any congregational singing today. We're going to be speaking the words as we follow along with Dale uh, on all verses of the song. Speak the words with joy, uh, or you can sing very softly to yourself. Maybe the person next to you will hear you. Uh, but that's how we're doing flower communion today. So let us stand and sing number 29.
that was the most gentle, sweet version of Joyful Joyful I have ever experienced. <laughs> In this season, approaching the early days of summer, may we feel the natural inclination to grow and flower and reach toward the sun. Even on the rainy and unseasonably cool days, may we be assured that the warmth will return. Let us light candles this morning for both the joys and the challenges of this past year that we've been a part of for the joys and sorrows in our life. I will light the first candle. Actually, I just realized we didn't do the chalice light. So I'm going to go back. Actually, can someone, can someone help me light the chalice? Uh, I'm going to volunteer. Lee, Lee is close. You come down and light it. I've got the words. Let's do this right. <laughs> we light the chalice today for the joy of flowers and for the inner garden of flowers that flourishes in the hearts of each of us this morning. We haven't done this for so long. We've lost. <laughs> yeah, so this candle is for Linda. She wasn't able to be here today. Some of her flowers are. Uh, but she's also doing in person. Her studio opened up this week in Bolton, uh, Suite 7. So she, she's working on Sunday today. Uh, so uh, that candle is for my lovely man. My sister who is going through a lot right now. Sum it up and say that. And it's nice to see
Canto, a great joy to be here with you all and to have my husband's older son, Steve, visiting with us this weekend. We haven't seen him in 20 months. My brother Hanley, who was in ICU at Bangor after extensive cancer surgery. I'm very, very happy to be able to be here today. It's been almost a year since I've been able to come. And I want to thank the people who brought me here today, because I don't have a car to drive anymore. If you live anywhere close where I live, pick me up in the morning on Sundays if you can. I can't walk that far. <laughs> I find myself sitting here thinking about this, and so I just thought, oh well, I'm going to light a candle. <laughs> um, this is this is Flower Communion Sunday, and while I was out uh, finding flowers to bring along today, and I was almost done, and then I looked a little bit in the distance, and I saw these little yellow uh, daylilies. And, and I thought, oh my goodness, how wonderful. The daylilies are what they call, what Lib and Mariah Putnam, who were members of this church for many years, and they're gone now. Uh, but they, they, they were here, you know, Lib and Mariah in their glory when I first arrived in this church in 1992. And, uh, and, and one day I was visiting them, and, uh, and they gave me some lemon lilies from their garden, which I planted, and I still have. So I just thought, I just thought I needed to mention that today, Flower Community Day. multi-purpose candle. So bear with me. This is, I, I can't describe the intense joy I feel at being here with everybody. Being able to see you in person, not just on Zoom, and being able to interact one-on-one -on -one soon, I hope, as soon as we get out, outside for coffee hour. And to be back in this, in this building is just an intense feeling. And I, I can't begin to thank the people who got it all cleaned up after, with a year's worth of dust and pigeon poop to deal with. <laughs> uh, another purpose of the candle is joy for warmth. That we have mostly got the cold at bay for a month or so. Uh, <laughs> uh, watch out for burning, for skin, for sunburn, watch out for bugs. And I'm glad to be able to do some work out in the garden. It's 
this year I don't plan to spend any part of the summer in the hospital. So. <laughs> We also want to honor our graduates today that are connected to our uh, church. Fen did a service uh, last, last week on YouTube for the graduates, a little commencement talk. So today, I have a few gifts for uh, members connected to our church. So uh, Truman, Truman Cromwell, he was here as part of our Sunday school group years ago, 18... 15 years ago or so. So Carol, his mom is here today. Would you come down and accept this gift? Actually, are you still here, Carol? She was right here, and then I don't know if she was. Okay, maybe she did. Well, she'll be here for coffee hour. Well, we have our, for the graduates, our Cup Cafe travel mugs. As they move on to their next adventure, no matter where that may be, this will keep their beverages hot or cold. So, uh, Sean and Carol should be back. Uh, Fed, make sure Carol gets this, okay? And also, Logan Rogers graduates from Holton High School this year, and his father uh, is here, Peter. If you'd like to come down and accept his travel mug for him, make sure he gets this. Peter. Uh, we have more if you'd like to, to purchase one for yourself. Uh, and I saw Logan's photograph of, of congratulations on the local shop and save. I was walking by and I said, oh, there's, uh, he works at the local grocery store. Uh, so if you see them around town, you know, give them uh, congratulations and, and uh, best wishes on their, on their next adventure. Uh, and also, Finn graduated from Meadville Lombard uh, and got a master's degree in religious studies a few weeks ago. Can you leave your camera for a second uh -huh. and come down here? Okay. Yeah, I'm just getting the right angle. So, Finn already has all kinds of travel mugs because he worked at the Cup Cafe for so long. So, this is something a little different. Uh, the box actually says it's a pair of uh, Apple AirPod Pros, but they're not. No. It's just a box. But open up inside, and I think you will find this for your travels as you head to New Orleans next nice. month. Well, X-Wing fighter from Star Wars. Yeah. <laughs> Mint condition. Uh, so, uh, so give a round of applause for all of our seniors and graduates who are leading off. A silent candle for any unspoken prayers this morning. Uh, I know we can't all speak, but this candle contains any concerns, prayers, and joys um, that are unspoken. And you can say any names this morning. That you'll, I'll say a prayer in a moment. If you'd like to add any names of graduates, family members, or just a joy for this Flower Communion Sunday, you can just say that softly out loud. We think of those who are not with us today and they are close to us uh, in our hearts, in our minds. We cherish those relationships. We offer prayers to them. The joy or sorrow of one is shared by all. May our hearts be as one on this day. Let us carry each thought or concern expressed in our heart and may the light of our love and compassion transform suffering into non-suffering and ease 
the difficulties of life. We radiate the light that we are. Blessed are we all on this day. Amen. And blessed be. Flower communion is a uh, one of the special traditions of a Unitarian Universalist movement. And Reverend Norbert uh, Chopik uh, was the originator of this ceremony. And we have a responsive reading today written by, by him, number 723, that we will use as our group reading. It's broken up into paragraphs. I'll read the first paragraph, and you read the following one, and we'll alternate back and forth. This is a flower communion prayer. In the name of providence, which implants in the seed the future of a flower, and in our hearts the longing for people to live in harmony. In the name of Christ, In the name of sages and great religious leaders who sacrificed their lives to hasten the coming of the age of mutual respect. Let us renew our resolution sincerely to be no brothers and sisters, regardless of any kind of law which restrains us from each other. In this holy resolve, may we be strengthened, knowing that we are God's family that one spirit, the spirit of love, unites us and endeavor for a more perfect and more joyful life for us all. Amen. We have special music this morning. Uh, we are going to sing for you, even though as a congregation we couldn't sing. Uh, we have a, a congregational and uni tombs uh, flower communion ensemble. So please come down. Uh, and we have a medley of two songs. And please hum along if, if you like. <laughs>
offering this morning is going to be self-service. Everything is on the back table where you entered. The, the offering plate is there. Our pishka is there if you'd like to give to uh, local needs in the area. Uh, and also our building fund jar is on the same table. So you can donate to any one of the three or all of the three. Uh, you'll have the entire length of Dale's offertory to make it back there, uh, make a contribution, and come back to your, to your seat. Or you can do it after the service. Please also, we're trying to give you as many options as possible on this Flower Communion Sunday. Let us give with hearts of joy this morning in this day of flowers, fresh air, and sunshine. Amen.
on opening a new store, a man received a bouquet of flowers. He became dismayed on reading the enclosed card that it said, with our deepest sympathy. While puzzling over the message, his telephone rang, and it was the florist, apologizing for having sent the wrong card to his business. Well, it's all right, said the storekeeper. I'm a businessman, and I understand how these things can happen. And, added the florist, I accidentally sent your card to a funeral party. Well, what did it say? asked the storekeeper. <clears throat> Congratulations on your new location. <laughs> well, the way things have gone for the past year, we've come to expect just about anything. If we weren't even here last June. We had just started our Zoom coffee hour and we were trying to figure out how to maintain and nourish spiritual community during a worldwide pandemic. This year, even more than most years, every appearance of a flower is most appreciated. The color, the fragrance, it doesn't matter if they're wild in a flower garden or from a florist. Flowers bring joy, beauty, and pleasure to our life, even if they are delivered to the wrong address or we're viewing them on a Zoom computer screen. The title of today's Flower Communion sermon is The Flowers Are Back. And I'd like to add so are we. It's been a long time coming, more than many of us expected, and I believe the time is here, just like a flower that is budding and blooming in the early days of June, so too it is our time to emerge, cautiously and hesitantly perhaps, but it is our time to return to the open sun and open skies of our being, to be together again in a safe manner and to find the joy and appreciation of being together again. We will still need to watch the numbers and heed the guidelines of our health organizations as the coming weeks and months unfold, but I would like to think that we can be cautiously optimistic about a circumspect return to our lives and our shared lives together in this community and the larger community. Today's service is a special and much anticipated occasion to do just that. The flowers are back and so are we. One of the songs that Dale typically plays for our flower communion service is June is busting out all over. <laughs> and I have found myself saying that phrase more times than I can count, Dale, uh, this year. It seems like everything is early, is growing like crazy, and then moving on to the next seasonal flower that's waiting in line. I heard several people commenting, flowers they usually bring to the flower communion service have already gone by. This year I brought a bouquet of irises from Linda's flower garden, which have never been ready for a flower communion service before. Flowers that are normally here may not be here this year. Flowers that usually aren't here are. We're adjusting as we go. That's what this year has been all about. One of my favorite memories of Flower Communion Sunday is the drive on our way to our barbecue location after the service. This year, we happen to be right here on the front lawn for our service. What I remember 
are the fields and pastures along the roadside. A vast color of yellow and greens. The dandelions, or rustic tulips, are typically at their peak in the first week of June. You may not appreciate them on your lawn, but they are a glorious display in a large field if you don't have to mow them. This year, they've already come and essentially gone, and we're on to the next flower in succession. I wrote this poem several years ago in the first week of June, and you'll notice the same yellow flower we were just talking about at its peak. Uh, this poem is titled, The Life of Flowers. Stepping out the back door in the early days of June, the lush field of long green grass is splashed with bursts of yellow under deep blue sky. These common flowers are the mass majority of the colorscape, outnumbering the modestly dispensed reds, blues, oranges, and whites. The human eye is one more color in the field. Eyelids wide open we see, we contemplate, we view the full expanse of our gaze. The flower does not exist for next week. The flower does not exist for last week. It exists for the short duration of the day at hand. It is yellow, it may be red, it is light pink. Open your eyes and see, open your heart and touch the life of flowers. When we walk in the garden of life with an open heart, every flower our gaze falls upon comes alive and beckons us to extend our affection to all things. There is no place for partiality when our soul embraces everything. Even the crude, the weeds, or the distasteful find a holding place in our awareness, a holding place that in time transforms even the most resistant or unsettling. In a world of both beauty and pain, we are simply alive to the wonder of it all. With each breath, we are living evidence of liberation. Walking in a garden of life, we walk in love. We walk with a deep connection to all that exists. We walk in harmony. We walk in, in with great appreciation. We walk in wonder of it all. This weekend, I heard bullfrogs at our place, and I saw fireflies a little earlier than usual. And did I mention the flowers are back as thick and colorful and lush as ever. I pray that your inner flower today is opening after a long and uncertain time of personal coverings, self-distancing and masks, Feel the ground beneath you, the soil and its nutrients. Look to the skies above you and feel the sun on your face and your body. Look around you and see the other flowers starting to open and bloom in this garden of life and in this community. You are a part of it and you have been missed. We are a garden of individuals, each valued and unique, assembled in this place, a place to share, celebrate, and explore together. On this Flower Communion Sunday, we look at this day as a time of return, of 
opening and a looking forward to the days ahead. The flowers are back, and so are we. Blessed are we all on this day. I need a volunteer to bring our flower communion basket from the back table down front uh, to place on our small altar here. Look at that, we have more volunteers than we can handle. <laughs> a beautiful uh, basket of fresh cut hand plucked flowers from our gardens. Uh, oftentimes people have picked dandelions on their way up the front walk of the church if they happen to forget their flower. If you notice this year our lilacs which are usually at peak, uh, Bill White's lilac bush that he planted here probably 10 years ago, uh, they are all Usually we can always depend on those for our flower communion basket, uh, but it's already past peak this year. This congregation is made up of many individuals contributing in many ways. As no two flowers are alike, so no two people are alike. Yet everyone being unique, giving as you do, make up the bouquet of this congregation. By exchanging flowers, we signify that we walk together in the search of what is true, disregarding that which divides, looking for what we share in common. Let these flowers be our sadness and joy, our troubles and our good times, our moments of despair and laughter. Let them be the wonder and mystery of this life that we share together. And I have a prayer uh, written for this ceremony by Reverend Martha Newman that we read each year. We have brought these flowers as symbols of our gathered humanity. Now let us share, each taking away a different flower than we brought as a symbol of our shared life and of our hope and trust in each other. May we be steady in the ways of peace and gentleness like a little flower. So we're going to do things a little differently this year. Uh, we are going to keep the basket down front on the altar and as Dale plays uh, some flower communion music, uh, just make your way down uh, at your own speed and select one of the flowers from uh, the basket. The only rule is you cannot take the same flower that you brought. Okay. Uh, and once you find the flower, just head back to your seat uh, and make room for the next person coming up. And this may take a little longer doing it this way this year, uh, but again, enjoy this, the beauty of this shared space and music uh, on this Flower Communion Day. It's a contemplative, unhurried uh, practice. Uh, and I'm going to bless these flowers with our Unitarian holy water that we've retained from the in-gathering service last year. And we'll sprinkle these flowers and give them a little blessing. Peace and gentleness, like a little flower. Peace and gentleness, like a flower. Okay. Let us begin. <laughs>
plenty of flowers here for everyone.
You look like a flower garden out there, everyone, with the uh, splashy and flashy shirts and outfits and flowers. Uh, a benediction. And now may we leave this place with simple wonder in our hearts and a flower in our hand. Blessed be on this day. Amen. Dale has a post loop for us, and that will finish our service for today. Thank you.